Kinshasa and Brazzaville is the two capitals which are closest together in the world. Not counting the Vatican City and Rome, of course. The story behind why these two cities are so close together has its roots in a more darker side of history. And it all starts out with Leopold II, King of the Belgians. Belgium is and was a very small country in landmass. You can actually fit the whole of Belgium within Lake Victoria. But the country was well developed and the royal family had accumulated enough wealth to start a private African colony, which would determine the faith of the continent. King Leopold wanted to have a colony. He looked several places all over the world fixed on the idea to be an imperial ruler. Leopold probably first heard of the riches within the Congo Basin from the tales of the explorer Verne Lovett Cameron, who was the first European to cross the African continent coast to coast. Leopold had now set his eyes on the Congo Basin and he needed an excuse to start colonizing. He used the pretext of philanthropy. He claimed that he wanted to establish settlements to bring civilization and enlightenment to the continent. His real reasons was riches and megalomania. But Leopold needed a person who could lead an expedition which would establish the settlements he needed along the Congo River. It so happens that Sir Henry Morton Stanley is yes, the same person who found Dr. Livingston and uttered the phrase Dr. Livingston, I presume? Anyways, Sir Stanley had led an expedition through Africa which confirmed that the Congo River was navigable from the coast to the heart of the continent. But Stanley was not interested in Leopold's prospects. He wanted Britain to annex the Congo. And he tried hard to influence Great Britain to do just that. But his attempts failed. After he realized that he wouldn't get Britain to annex the Congo, he turned to Leopold. And in December 1878, he had signed a five-year contract with the Belgian king. July 1879, he was again back at the mouth of the Congo. His stated mission was to establish settlements from which peace and harmony would ensue. But it's clear that Stanley also knew that King Leopold's real intentions was far from philanthropic. Leopold tried also really hard to keep the whole operation a secret. But to keep something like this a secret is hard. And soon France had heard about it, and they rightly suspected that it wasn't a philanthropic endeavor. France decided that they wanted to do the same thing. In the spring of 1880, France sent an expedition led by Pierre Savonnon de Brassa to Gabon. He was to follow the river Ugu into the country. Brassa had claimed that he could plant a French flag at the Stanley Pool before the Belgians could do the same thing. Leopold got hold of that information and urged Stanley to hurry up to the location. But Stanley wouldn't go without all the cargo he needed to establish settlements. Brassa started out four months behind Stanley, but he traveled light and arrived first at the pool in late August 1880. Brassa obtained a strip of land roughly 15 kilometers long on the north shore of the pool. And it's here that the city of Brazzaville stands today. He then secured exclusive trading rights and placed the region under the protection of France. When Stanley arrived at the pool, he found that the treaty acquired by Brassa was sturdy enough and he couldn't get the provisions he needed. And he also knew better than anyone that the ones who control the pool also control the wealth of the Congo Basin. Stanley was forced to retreat to the south shore where he acquired rights and territory from a local chief which matched the French concession. The settlement was named Leopoldville and bore that name until 1966. Leopoldville was then renamed Kinshasa for a village named Kinshasa that once stood near the site. Stanley went further upstream, establishing more settlements and treaties as he went. The furthest was 2000 kilometers from the pool and was then named Stanleyville. It's now called Kisangani. Stanley returned to Europe in 1884. His five years on the Congo had provided King Leopold with access to the Congo Basin and the territories of Central Africa that lay beyond. King Leopold established the Congo Free State as his own personal colony, from which he harvested great riches. But it was at extreme human costs, far from the philanthropic lie 
he tried to tell. Joseph Conrads, who wrote the book Heart of Darkness, has tried to portray parts of the horrific atrocities which was committed to the Congolese people under King Leopold's rule. And in an essay, Conrad describes it as the vilest scramble for loot that ever disfigured the history of human conscience. And that is a very brief explanation of why Brazzaville and Kinshasa is so close together. In this video I rely heavily on the book Africa, a biography of the continent by John Reeder. A very interesting and well written book which you should definitely read. Thanks for watching and if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. Just a quick announcement as I'm finishing up uh, the video. Uh, I will change the upload schedule to twice a month uh, due to work and uh, other obligations. Uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.